Brought to you by DistroKid. Being part of DistroKid means being part of a bigger music community. If you head to the goodies tab, you will find the playlist Spotlight. This is a place where DistroKid features two random artists and allow you to vote for who deserves a spot on their playlist. You also have the option to DM the artist for possible collabs. If you haven't signed up for DistroKid already, use the code below and save 7%. Day number two, day number two, here we are. I think maybe we should probably, maybe turn this light on. Voila, wait, I forgot. We have lights. Oh yes, so much better. Look at all this brightness. Ah. Okay. <sighs> you think this is on like the 10th floor, right? When we all worked up. So I know I said my cousin Don was coming to help me, but that's not gonna happen, sadly. So I'm probably gonna have to like break that desk down and just, you know, Maybe put that keyboard stand on top of my car. I don't know. We'll figure it out. For now, I just brought a box of goodies. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. No, no, Yes. Of course, you know, you gotta be extra careful with these assets. I guess we can go through this box and see what we're gonna be bringing. Pretty much all the music stuff. Um, and you know, some collectibles, but We'll leave that for last. For now, I guess we're just settling in, trying to get everything together. I really need to bring a chair in here. Um, yeah, you know, I need a chair. I really need to bring that desk. That needs to be like the next thing we do. I'm probably gonna go back home and try to do that today because I definitely need that desk in here. Um, yeah, so I guess we don't really need this bright light. Maybe we do. So I don't have the Wi-Fi password yet, but there is Wi-Fi, so you know, success that that's included. Um, people were asking how much this cost. This is costing me around 600 bucks, which is, you know, it's gonna hurt, but to make money, you gotta spend money. So, you know, YOLO, it is what it is. <laughs> we're gonna make it work. We're gonna take advantage of this time, do as much work as we can while we have this office space, take you guys along for the ride, make music, teach you guys some awesome cool synthesizer stuff, look at cool toys, like what's in this box. Let's just start taking things out for this our bag of cables and like I need to do like a cable video because like I got so many cables this is nothing this is like 10% of the cables that I own so my boy nor it blank nor it blank v nor it nor nor it blank v put me onto these little clamps which have been very useful um, I know I said yesterday that I was gonna like mount my camera here on the wall but we're not gonna do that because I really don't want to make any holes in this place. I just ordered this thing, so that looks pretty promising. This little thing is cool too, but like you can already see, I don't even know how I'm gonna take that off of there. And like I said, I don't really want to make any more holes in this place. Like, I don't really want to go through that because I don't even know what I'm gonna do about my apartment with all those holes. So the new plan for now is to bring over our other pole that we have that's kind of like this pole. And then I'm gonna clamp this over here to one of them. Hopefully that'll hold this camera. Um, I guess I'll have to like check it every time I put it on there because you know, it's a pretty heavy camera especially with the lens And then we got this other thing that's gonna go on top and shoot down. So, you know, that's gonna be cool I didn't really want to get like those that like clamp on the table like you guys know like these those work for other type of like Videos, you know, if you're like reviewing like cameras or like phones or something that you don't have to be like finger drumming those work. But if you're doing anything that like requires you to like be hitting the machine and finger drumming, like that's just gonna move the camera, it's not gonna be fun. Didn't wanna put you guys through that. So we're gonna have this set up, it's gonna be real nice, real nice. Also, I just got word earlier that room treatment is on the way, baby. We got the room treatment on the way. It's gonna look so fly and gray. Gonna set that up with you guys, you already know. We're gonna be doing a whole transformation of this room day by day, as we come, as we go, as I'm building. Hopefully I can have some friends, make some friends that will help me bring some stuff over. But if not, you know, your girl's just gonna have to pull through. Just bring everything up here slowly, but hey, we're gonna do it, we're gonna do it. I think right now I'm just gonna clean up this desk and just place the stuff on the desk. Yeah. All right, so this bag doesn't have to be on here. Put that right there. Our interface. This is my main interface. This is the Arturia Fuse Studio. Shout out to Arturia for definitely making cool stuff these last few years. They got the Keystep Pro. They got the Fuse. They got a bunch of cool stuff that they've come out with. I'm really hoping that they do another run of that Microbrute SE in like special edition colors, cause like those were so nice and I never got one of those cool 
looking color one, so I really hope they do that. Um, but yeah, it's been a good interface, can't complain. I really wish that there were like individual mute buttons instead of like these listen buttons that I don't really understand what they're for, I don't really use them. And I really love this, you know, it's just nice. And also how small it is because like I have the um, Zoom L12 and yes, it's very dope, but it's really big. I know the Zoom L20 is like almost just as big as the L12. So if you're thinking about that, probably go for the 20 if you have all that gear that needs to be plugged up. If not, I think the L8 is pretty dope too. We're gonna be doing like a comparison of interface versus mixer, so you know, stay tuned. I'm gonna have to take this home because we gotta take down that keyboard wall. Hopefully we can get that done today. Weapon, let me grab my handy dandy Cobra mini pod. This is just like a review of all the ish I got because you know, this is work to make these videos. You think this just happens? No. So today we're looking at the Cobra Mini Pod 2. This little thing is dopey dope dope. It's a tiny little tripod that is like super sturdy. Like this holds my A7C with a 24 millimeter lens, which is a pretty heavy setup. And you know, it doesn't really go nowhere there. And then I have this little clamp that just clamp it on, clamp off, so I don't gotta go through no trouble. And that's what we're about to do. So, how you going? All right, so I think I'm gonna just sit on the floor and show you guys what's in the goodie bag. Got that beautiful window in the background. So awesome. First and foremost, we have our super rare Unicorn Casio SK-1. This is bay. So dusty. Everything is so dusty. Nothing has been used in a long time. And I'm gonna make a video about this soon, but basically it's okay to take breaks and like you don't have to be constantly creating all the time. More on that later, but that's kind of what I've been doing. I haven't made music in a while just because I've been focusing on other things. But again, that's okay. I will make a video on that soon. So yes, this is the Casio SK-1. You already know we're gonna be making music and videos with all this cool stuff. So, baby, right here. So actually I had two of these and I paid a pretty hefty price for them, but then I sold one and made a profit and that one pretty much paid for this one. So you know, you just gotta, you gotta play the game if you want the cool stuff. Unicorn Casio, definitely a special piece, not something you see every day. <laughs> Casio PT82. This is just a little gimmicky keyboard. I got it because it was red. It makes, you know, decent sounds. It's monophonic. Nothing as fancy as the SK-1, but it's red. It also works with like ROMs. It came with a couple. I think right now on here is When You Wish Upon a Star Classic. This is a classic now, and you guys know I love colorful keyboards, so part of the Casio collection. Of course, you already know if it's got that deck saver, you already know this is big right here. We only put deck savers on things we really care about, right? So this is my OP-1. I mean, there's no need to tell y'all what this is if you're on this channel. If you're a synthesizer nerd, you already know what this is. But I definitely got to make more videos on this thing. Um, I made a whole album in 24 hours, like two years ago, maybe three. And it was nuts. Like, I'll definitely not do that ever again. My brain was completely fried. But it was fun. I'll make another OP-1 album, but definitely not in 24 hours. Um, there's so much that you can do with this thing. Battery powered, great lo-fi sounds, a sampler, OP-1, can't go wrong with it. A new little toy that we just got that I was actually pretty impressed with was the TR-6S. So when I first saw this, I thought it was like a dumbed down version of the TR-8S, so I didn't really pay much attention to it, but it's kind of like the MC-101 in the sense that they use kind of like the same menu style, like they both use this um, green like type screen that you find on the D05 and it also has these squishy little buttons that are like so cute and then you know you get your classic 808, 909, 606, 707, 727 and you can load samples into it. Also it's battery powered so that's always a plus. I took this on a trip that I went on last month and it was a nice time on the airplane. My only complaint is it doesn't have audio inputs because that would have been such a game changer because this loop step, yo, this loop step does like what people pay $1,300 for an Octatrack to do. Like it loops your incoming audio to be able to like get those glitchy type effects and that's cool with like the internal sounds. But if you could have done that to like incoming audio, this thing would have been at a whole different level. But for a portable drum machine, not bad. The Keystep 37, the successor to the Keystep, the original Keystep. Um, I guess they added an extra octave, is that what they did? I don't even know what they did. It's been so long since I had the original Keystep, but it's definitely longer. To be honest with you guys, I've never even used the built-in sequencer on this thing or the ARP, and I know, like I've heard people say that it's a lot of fun, but I just always end up using this as a MIDI controller. I love using this with like the Machine Plus, 
because the Machine Plus has USB-A, which is amazing because you literally just plug USB-A straight into your USB-B and you don't even gotta power this thing, so pretty cool. The keys, they're not, you know, no montage $3,000 synthesizer keys. They're decent keys, good for on the go. It's also one of the few MIDI affordable keyboards that has CV and sync, so you know, you can use this with your modular, with your Volca setup, lots of cool stuff. Definitely recommend this little guy. Up next is the most special piece out of everything, of course, our SP404. This is Bay. This is an SP404 SX, in case you're wondering. Um, I actually picked up an OG SP404 in black and gold, baby. You know, we got we, we are about the rare things in this crib, in this office space, in this 110 square feet. OG SP404, SP404 SX. I've never tried the SP404A, but I heard it's the same exact thing as the SX. Um, but this one does sound a little different, like the output sounds a little different, the vinyl sim, like I, there's a few videos comparing them, I've made a video comparing them, I might do like a recap one because that one was like a live stream, I might do that if you guys are into that, let me know. But yeah, the pads are very ugly and yellow as you can see, like look at that. Ooh. But I actually still have the OG pads from this one, so I was thinking of opening this one up and changing the pads, but it was such a pain in the ass last time, like to put these pads on, that I'm like, uh, that's gonna be like a whole day of project, but you know, we might do it. If you're looking for like an effects processor, a lot of people always ask me like, should I go with this or the Octatrack? The Octatrack is such a deep beast and it's so much more than an effects processor, it's more of a sample crazy mangling machine. If you're looking for something to just like play back the tracks that you've already created or even to like chop samples up, run something else through here and just use the effects with it, I think the effects on the SP404 are really good. It's battery powered, like I mean y'all don't need me to tell you how good this thing is, y'all already know. And of course the things we care about, that's it. Another important item on the list is this Zoom F1. I need to like do a review about this thing because like I've literally used this on almost every single record that I've made. Like every single track that I've recorded, I recorded it most likely with this thing. And not like this, like not with this microphone. Like, you know, just take this off. And this is literally a tiny little stereo recorder. Look at this. And like I used to have the H4N and it's pretty much the same thing with like bigger inputs. Also the H6, you know, more inputs. But this little guy, look at this. Look at how small it is. It's beautiful. I used to actually use this setup for my camera because it comes with like a little adapter thingy that you can like put it on top of your camera. But you know, this is huge now that I have the little Sony microphone, which I'm in love with by the way. This thing has been making like these blog type videos such a breeze because like you don't want to be thinking about like, oh, I need to sync my audio and do this and like plug things up and like all this extra stuff that you have to do when you're making videos, right? Like you just want something that's going to get you from point A to point B and that my friend is called the path of least restriction. So like if you're having trouble doing something, just make it as easy for you as possible to get it done and things will get done. So yeah, definitely useful little device. I use it as a field recorder now, but just so you know, you can use it as a camera mic, as an interface. You can even use this thing as an interface. I've never done it, but it does have a USB micro right there and it's an interface. Then you have your triple A batteries. So you're gonna plug your synthesizer setup or your mixer straight into like the line in and then you just plug this into your speakers or your headphones and boom, you're good to go. Little recording setup on the go, even for like great studio use. Just a few more things left for now. Of course, TR8, you guys know, I love this thing. Such a hands-on drum machine. We actually just got the MC707 and I'm actually quite surprised by it. At first I was like a little intimidated because like, you know, the screen, always a screen like kind of like puts you off because like, I don't know, I just like devices that don't have a screen, like, you know, the SP404 or this, because, like, it's just more muscle memory of pressing things. But with the screen, it does allow you to, like, get that visual representation when, like, you're messing with the clips and stuff. I'm still learning to use it, but video on that soon. They just came out with a new update, like, some scene chaining thing going on, so we're gonna check that out very soon. But yes, this is the OG, the TR8. Well, I guess the OG would be the TR808, but, you know, this is our OG TR8. Classic drum machine, super hands-on. I feel like we're gonna have to put some more stickers on it because, you know, it's looking a little sad compared to our SP404. This is like my go-to drum machine when I'm not trying to think about like drum design, when I just want a simple beat and focus on playing keys. I've said that before, TR8. Also, it's got external ends, like I was hoping that the tr 6s would have, but it doesn't. And the sidechain compressor on it is really cool. Sometimes I'll run like my whole Eurorack mixer through here and then just record these outs into this thing, 
dope, simple setup. Another toy that's about to blow y'all's mind. Oh snap! Oh y'all did y'all y'all didn't even know. Y'all didn't even know your girl. Your girl had a machine drum. Y'all didn't even know, and I know it's sad because I haven't really used it much. <laughs> um, I made a few live streams on it a couple months ago, and that's been about it. Honestly, guys, I've used this probably like five times. Not because I don't like it or anything, just because I've been so busy, and like I said, I've just been taking a break from music making, and that's okay. I'm completely fine with it. So I'm excited to like try this out. And I don't know if you guys saw in the background, but we also got that mono machine keyboard. What? That and this, fun times coming. And last but not least is the Zoom L12 mixer and interface because this is also an interface. So I really like this thing. This is a 12 channel mixer. You got eight mono channels and then you got two stereo channels that, you know, they're mono, 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 mono. So that's technically 12 channels. It also doesn't require a driver to run, which means it works very smoothly on the new Mac M1s because like I was having issues with my interface with the Mac M1 when it first came out and this just worked super smoothly. It also means that it can work with the iPad because it doesn't need a driver. So pretty dope little mixer. Like I said earlier, I think that L8 is a great option if you don't need these many inputs. And especially like, honestly, I sometimes wish I had the L8 cause it's like much smaller, but I'm not about to downgrade because then I'll be like, mm, I probably needed those inputs and I'm sure I will. So this is a very special mixer because not only is it a mixer, you know, compared to an interface and you get all the nice sliders and the knobs, but this is a recorder. Like this is Zoom, this is the same brand that made the little F1 recorder. So like, this is what they do. They're like a recorder, audio recording company, right? So they made this mixer like specifically for creators. I know they have some other products for like podcasting and recording and like actual fancy film 360 recording, um, but that's not what we're doing here. So, you know, this works. So the cool thing about this mixer is that it's perfect for a dollar setup because you don't really need like anything extra to record. Before I had this mixer, I would record my regular mixer into this little thing. But now, you know, I don't have to do that. All I have to do is make sure my SD card is in here. And like, that's one of my gripes about it actually, that the SD card slot is in the back. Because like, I wish it would've just been up here so I can just be like pop on pop, you know? But every time I'm gonna be like, Ugh. But basically you can record like the whole stereo file or you can choose what specific channels you record. So, you know, that's definitely useful. I also like the dedicated mute buttons because again, my interface doesn't have dedicated mute buttons. And I think like that's so much better than like listen buttons or anything else. Like. I feel like mute buttons are definitely important. It's sturdy, it's well built, but it is plastic, so just keep that in mind. It's not very heavy, you know, which isn't a bad thing, but it has gotten a few like scratches from just like, I don't even know, I don't even know how. It also has two high Z channels, which are good for like recording guitar or anything that needs that extra oomph. And then you can recall your presets, so like you can save the position of the sliders. Like there's so much that you can do with this thing. You guys find links to all this stuff in the description below. I mean, the things that are like not discontinued, not like the machine drum or the Casio SK-1 because you know, those are harder to get. You can find them if you really look. But for anything that's not discontinued that I showed you guys today, you will find the link in the description and they are affiliate links. So if you buy something, it helps me out. So thanks. And that's it guys, you know, just safety, safety baggies. And yeah, all this stuff. What are we gonna do with this? I mean, I guess we should just leave it on the floor, I guess. I mean, what, what, we don't got no tables, we don't got nothing. I'm probably just gonna head back to my crib and see what else I can bring and go from there, I guess. So I was just about to go home and then I realized that it's traffic hours. So I was about to be in traffic for a bit. So I thought maybe I should just get a few things from the dollar store that I needed, like this. We're gonna have to put that on our window because we don't want people seeing this. We went to the dollar store because you already know how we do. You gotta save money wherever you can to spend it on synthesizers. And why pay $3 for some when you can get it for a dollar? So we got that. We got some tape. We got some water so we don't have to be thirsty. So we can like cut it and make sure that we can cover everything perfectly. We also got some grub because you know we're gonna be here a minute. Your girl about to feast and then we're gonna get to work. You already know, like you have to make sure you eat nutritious. It's definitely important to eat food that's gonna keep you energized throughout the day and inspired and making beats, so you know. And like maybe you guys can't tell, but I actually lost a lot of weight. I know I still, you know, I still got that, got that mommy weight, but I'm gonna put it before and after. Yo, that's all that Chick-fil-A right there. But yeah, I've just been trying to eat healthier and just be healthier overall. Especially with like staying at home all freaking day, you know? You gotta move, you gotta do something. You can't just sit on the computer all fucking day and die. And I've tried to be vegan before, but it's just so difficult because I love meat so much. 
And also like after like three weeks of eating vegan, you start to feel a little weak. I mean, at least that's how it is for me. I always start to feel like weak, like I'm not getting enough vitamins. And I know I gotta take B12 on the daily if I'm gonna do that, but I don't. So I'm just doing something that works for me, veggies, meat, you know, less processed crap, more natural stuff. It's, it's going well, like, I feel great. It's so hard to like find good healthy food in America, like fast, fast, healthy, quick food, <laughs> you know, compared to like Europe and Japan and all these other smart places. But that's definitely changing, I feel. You know, I feel like people are starting to become a little more conscious about the truth about like pharmaceutical companies and like, you know, they just want to see you sick so you can pay them. I'm definitely getting this again. And I also don't believe that you should like cut bad food out completely because like that's impossible, you know, and if you can do it, good for you. But it's about like what you eat more often. So like, you know, less often eat crap, more often eat healthy things. All right, so we have these black things that we're about to put up. I was thinking it was gonna go this way, but now I know that it's not because that's gonna be too small. But this might be a perfect fit. That would be awesome, but no, it's good to be through. Oh, oh my goodness. Yo, the synth cuts are on our side, yo. Look, this is a perfect, this is a perfect fit. We still gotta put a little tape on it, but that's okay. I hope I got enough, you know, better to have more than less. I got like five, hopefully that's enough. Tell me that's not a sign that that's a freaking perfect fit. Like, thank you, thank you guys. Right, so it was almost a perfect fit, but yo, look at this. So much better, so much more privacy. We had to like, it was almost a perfect fit. It had that little piece there. I'm like, screw it. I'm just gonna put the whole thing on there instead of like trying to cut it and trying to guess the measurements, you know, we just, we're just doing it the easiest and coolest way. And look at that, perfection, privacy. Is it too boring? Is, is black too boring compared to like the colorful room? Ooh, maybe I can like put the, put the, the falling things, the, the leaves, thingamajigger. We'll see, we'll see tomorrow. That's it guys, I'm about to head home, pack some more stuff up and head back over here tomorrow. Peace.